In this video, I'd like to explain to you my experiences as a private jet charter broker, my experience within the business, and why I believe this is a bad business to start, and why you should not get into brokering private jet charter flights. Now, first off, why do I say this? What is my background? My name is Ryan Huber. Some of you might know me from my YouTube channel, my Instagram. I'm a private jet pilot, and I've been a private jet pilot for the last seven years and I fly a Gulfstream G650 right now for a private operator. I've flown Gulfstreams for about five years. I've always been in private aviation, and I've also always been an entrepreneur. I've done a lot of real estate deals, wholesale real estate primarily, closed about 30 deals in five states. And as an entrepreneur, somebody that loves business, I wanted to try getting into the private jet charter broker field because I love aviation, I love business, and I wanted to merge the two and find a business model that might work for me. So about a year ago, in the beginning of 2022, I started a private jet charter broker company with a partner, a friend of mine that has a little bit of experience in the field and has been in aviation in the past and I did not have a good experience with it. I made a video about eight months ago highlighting the business model, how it works, how I got into it, and you can check that video out on my channel. Now, I just wanted to make this as a summation of my experience because I get about one DM a week of somebody asking me, hey, should I become a private jet charter broker? Should I get into this business model as an entrepreneur myself? Why, why not? What are the highlights? What does this look like? And there's really no information about this online. And here's the reasons why you should not start this business. First off, the customer avatar is very, very specific and very, very hard to market to. The person you're going after that's gonna spend 20, 30, 40, $50,000 on a private jet flight for a single charter is somebody that makes between five and $10 million a year or more and travels somewhere between 20 and 40 hours a year. That is your primary customer avatar. Now, how do you acquire these customers? If you have a very good organic network and you know a lot of high net worth individuals that charter jets specifically, then this may be a business model for you. But for myself, even knowing a lot of people that make a million dollars a year, two, three million dollars a year, even those people in my network often do not travel via private jet. It's simply not worth the cost. If you're making $100,000 a month net or even gross, whatever it may be, $20,000 on a trip is quite a lot of money. And it really just doesn't make sense if you can fly first class or whatever, save the money, reinvest, reinvest back into your business, et cetera. So the customer avatar is very, very hard to go after. Now, how did I go after this customer avatar? I specifically used Google ads as our primary marketing source to attract new customers. Now, the reason I did this is because I have experience in Google ads over many years with different business models, and I knew how to do it. And for somebody that may not charter currently, what's the first thing they're gonna do? They're probably gonna Google private jet charter companies or private jet flights from Miami to New York. And those are some of the keywords and phrases that we targeted to try and attract customers to our website. And our website was ultimately a landing page that would drive traffic to our CRM, leads, we would call those leads, ask them about their trip, and then try and give our services to them and find them private jet flights, broker these flights, and sell them a flight. Now, keep in mind, we do not own the jets. This is a brokerage model. We don't have jets. We don't have a charter certificate. And what we did was we would connect people looking for certain flights with operators that could service those flights for a fee. Typically, the fee in this game is 10%, is an industry standard margin. So it's a very hard customer avatar to attract. And the people we did attract, we got them through Google Leads for about $91 per lead, which really isn't that bad for a lead. Out of those leads, it would take us 12 leads to close one deal. So our overall cost per deal was about $1,714 per new client acquisition. So in order to profit, at least on our marketing, we need to have a return on that $1,700. So how much do we make on average per flight? The average we made per flight was $1,837. So you see, that's hardly over a 1x return on our ad spend. Could this be better? Of course. Am I the best advertiser? No. But the margins were very, very slim, given that it was hard to attract these people with some kind of paid marketing. The margins, like I spoke of, are very thin. A 10% margin is a thin margin. If you're finding a flight from an operator for $20,000, 
your markup is about $2,000. If it costs you $1,700 to attract a customer, you're making 300 bucks. Now keep in mind, this isn't including things like Avinode or FlyEasy, these softwares that cost $1,000 to $1,500 a month to be able to have access to these operator networks. The cost of our website, the cost of our dialer, phone services, office space, et cetera. So we did this business for about a year. We grossed around half a million dollars in sales and overall we barely broke even. So this all in all was a great experience for me, but not something I want to continue. The biggest issue with being a private jet charter broker is it's a commoditized offer. Now, I went to a, an event last year, an event hosted by Ravi Abuvala. Some of you may know who that is, some of you may not. R Ravi is a business consultant specialist that has a company called Scaling with Systems, and he teaches businesses how to scale, how to scale their offers, and focuses on business systems. And I went there specifically asking him, is this business scalable? How can I make this better? Because at the time I knew I was barely breaking even, it was costing me $1,700 to attract a customer and our margins were thin. And the problem simply is that everybody else you're competing with in this market, they're doing the exact same thing. They're charging 10% on top. You're charging 10% on top. You're sourcing flights from the same operators. So you can't really sweeten your offer or sweeten your deal to make it better. So to use an analogy, what's a commoditized offer? Think of somebody selling banana. If you wanna buy bananas, you don't care much about the banana. A banana is a banana is a banana. So are you gonna go after the one that's $4 or the one that's $3? You're just gonna to default to the one that's $3. And I asked Ravi specifically about this and I said, what would you look for when you're trying to find a private jet flight? And he'd go, I'd go after the cheapest option. Does it really matter if it's a Citation 2 or CJ2, a Lear 60? I don't really care. I just want to get from Miami to New York as easily as possible for the lowest dollar. Now, there might be some people that have other options. They want a nicer jet. They want to fly in a Gulfstream. But even then, you're fighting over the same product. There's no value you can add to make your product more attractable to upcharge higher. If I say, hey, I'm gonna throw in catering, I'm gonna throw in a driver service, I'm gonna put balloons on the plane, I can't charge $25,000 for that to compete with somebody that's charging $20,000 for the base. So this is a commoditized offer where you're gonna be competing on price and only price and nothing else. It's as simple as that. There's really not much else you can compete on if you're going to be a broker in this game. That leads into another point. There is no product control. You have no control over your product. We are simply brokers finding flights for customers. So if they show up and the operator XYZ charter service that we're using to service them provides a shitty jet or they show up late or the pilots are assholes, we don't know that. We can't control that. And we had many experiences where the charter company did something bad and they said, oh, this jet's not available last minute. We're going to have to service you on another jet. Or, oh, our pilots are late. Or this happened or that happened. And it's completely outside of our control. But we are the service provider. So the customer comes to us and says, hey, what's wrong? Why am I not flying in this Honda jet? Why are they trying to get me in a CJ2? Well, sorry, it's not our fault. It's the operator's fault. So there's very limited product control. And you're competing on price. And there's really nothing you can do about that. Another nightmare, and the last reason why this business sucks, is payment processing. You are processing tens of thousands of dollars in payments daily. What does this look like? If I am a customer and I come to you and I say, hey, I want a flight on Sunday, it's Friday night, and on Sunday I need to get to New York from Miami. It's gonna be $20,000. Okay, here's my credit card. What happens in that scenario? I give you my credit card, you charge $20,000, and now you have to pay the operator, say, $18,000 for that flight so you can make your $2,000 margin. But you don't have those funds yet. Those funds have not cleared into your bank account. If you swipe the customer's card on a Friday, you're not gonna see those funds until maybe Wednesday. So how do you pay for that flight? If you don't have a big pool of cash and a sum of money that you can use to float some of these expenses, 
then you're going to be screwed or you're going to be scrambling to figure it out. So many, many times we're having to float money on our credit cards in order to wait until the customer's credit card payment would come in in order to make our margin and still get the operator their money. Even if it's a Saturday and they want to fly on Sunday and they say, hey, we'll wire you the money. Guess what? A wire transfer is not going to hit your bank account until Monday. So this becomes a big, big problem and banks don't like this. We talked to many payment processors. We tried using Stripe. We tried using QuickBooks, different payment processing services. We talked to Chase Merchant Services and they reviewed our business and said, no, this is too high risk due to the big amounts of money you're handling and these quick processing times. And all it takes is one person to give you a credit card for 20 grand. It goes through and then you don't get that money. You put $18,000 to the operator. For some reason, they charge it back and you, now you have a dispute. You're out 18,000 grand to try and make your $2,000 margin. And that can become a very, very big headache. So there's a lot of financial, legal and contractual issues that make this business very, very risky because if somebody wants to pay for a $150,000 flight, they might have a black card Amex and they can do that on their Amex and that's how they want to pay. But do you have $130,000 cash that you can float to the operator until you wait for that to clear? Otherwise, you're looking at a seven to 10 day time frame where the client has to pay you in advance in order to book those flights. And let's face it, these people that are multimillionaires and they want to use a private jet oftentimes want to book last minute. It's a last minute occurrence, something happened. Hey, I'm in Aspen, I gotta get out of here to New York for a last minute meeting. I'll pay you 40 grand, how do we make the deal work? And oftentimes you have to shut that down because you simply cannot process those payments in time. So all in all, the summation of this was I found it to be a very difficult business with very slim margins and it looks very sexy on the outside and it's something I'm passionate about, but your passion and something that's sexy is not necessarily the best money maker. You want something that is going to be a high margin business, you control the product, you have a non-commoditized, cold, friendly offer that you can offer to your customer that stands out to the individual and you can price at a luxury price point. So do I recommend for anybody to get into the private jet charter broker business as an entrepreneur? I do not. I think it's a terrible business model. There's really no way you can compete. And with services like apps, AI, the internet, it's becoming more and more easy for customers to go around a broker and just go directly to their these operators themselves. Or if they really have some money, sign up for a company like NetJets, FlexJet, a fractional or buy the jet themselves. So I just wanted to make this video to clear everything up. My business as a private jet charter broker is over. It's a failure for me. And I accept that failure. I did not run the business correctly to make it profitable and make it successful. But I just wanted to address this and give this video out to you all. So if you want to get into the industry, you can make a decision for yourself with more education on these topics because there's really nothing on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about aviation, entrepreneurship or life, leave a comment. DM me on Instagram at it's Ryan Huber and sort your full potential.